Hi, I'm Stephanie Lester and today we're creating the needle felted Nordic Gnomes from the Crafty Kit Company. Welcome to the gnomes needle felting workshop. So we are going to make these lovely little gnomes all based on, well all coming from the uh, kit from the Crafty Kit Company. Um, and what we always try to do is to make this more of a felt along workshop than a tutorial. Um, so we're all doing it together rather than me instructing you on what to do. Um, hopefully you like it that way. And the great thing about the video is obviously you can speed it up if um, you've got it fine and you want to go faster or you can actually stop it and go back again if you need to do those bits again if you have any questions at all by all means put them in the comments underneath the youtube um, video on my channel or you can join um, the crafty kit company needle felting group on facebook um, or join my facebook group two teaks tips and tutorials um, on facebook as well okay so um, I think that's all we need to um, know about before we get started. And just to know, we'll be following the um, instructions in the kit. So you can have those in front of you as well to make sure um, you're exactly where we are. And if there's any changes that I'm going to suggest or maybe um, say that you could do something different, I, I won't put those till the very end. And then we'll come back here to say goodbye. OK, so I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so here we are at the demo desk. So first things first, what's in the package? So we've got um, all of the wool. We've got our grey for the body, this um, beautiful red for the hat. We've got the flesh colour for the nose and we've got the white for the beard. And um, we've got the felting needles. So now I need to explain something before I get started. Um, my hands, all my nails, I um, was dying wool yesterday. So um, please don't think I have the most atrocious um, fingernails known to man. Um, but for some reason, I can't get it off <laughs> the bottom of the nail. Anyway, um, my problem, but I just wanted to explain that in case you were um, slightly distracted by the fact that I appear to have very dirty um, nails. Anyway, moving on. Okay, so yes, we've got all the wool. We've got the instructions, um, we've got our needles, and we have our mat. So we're going to go through the instructions um, pretty much as they are in here, but I shall be adding just a few different ways that perhaps I will do things. And at the end um, of that first part, I will add in um, perhaps some different ways to um, decorate. That's the word, to decorate. So it could be, I mean, we've got a lovely, lovely little Nordic gnome, but it might be you would like to um, arrange for him to have a wife or a girlfriend or a child or different, you know. So I'm going to go through a few bits and pieces um, that I've come up with just to give you some ideas, but obviously um, completely and utterly only limited to your own imagination. So that will be at the end. We'll first of all just go through the um, basic shape. Those are the three that I've done so far with my little kit. So to explain then that the kit itself, I mean, how many you do is obviously up to you, but I would suggest that you decide at the start so that you can split up the wall into um, the uh, numbers that you're going to do. So if I explain that, 
these two came from um, half the kit. So you could do two slightly bigger than this, um, or you could do one very much bigger than this, um, or you could do a family, because if, if this came from half the kit, you could do two more, which could be two um, female names to go, to go with them. So just to give you an idea about numbers and what you might like to do. So the first thing to do is to split up the wall into the numbers you're going to do. So I'm going to initially split it up into a half. So that means... Bum, 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 bum. Basically, splitting that in half, splitting that in half. I've got two extra bits there, so split those in half. And splitting that in half. And just to um, quickly say, when you're splitting wall, the way to do it is to hold out here and not in here because if you try and split there that's actually very difficult because you've basically got the end of one strand and the other end of that same strand and you're trying to pull wool apart rather than separating the wool which if you pull from here will just separate the strands okay so um, divide up yours into um, whatever configuration that you would like and um, we will then start. Okay so I have all my colours laid out there and um, here are my needles. Now as you can see with my needles I have already taped two of them together and got one separate you have got three needles in your kit and for the reason of exactly as I have done the idea being you have one needle to do all the um, smaller pieces of work and two needles when you want to felt um, like the core when you're getting started um, just to make well basically it's double as quick because you're using two needles so we have our mat also as this is the um, beginner kit I will just explain very briefly um, with regards to using the needles so rule number one you can go as fast or as slow as you like it's completely up to you um, there's no right nor wrong way but when you're actually um, stabbing the rule is whatever angle you go in at you must come out at so if you're going in, out, in, out, even if you're going at an angle, you can go that way, but make sure you're in and out always at the same. Now I've got a very soft piece of wool here that is, hasn't been felted. So actually, if I went like that, um, I, even then, see how I'm moving the wool. And if I held onto it, I'd actually be putting a strain on the needle because this end bit here is much thinner than this shaft here. Um, and in a felted wall, you will break the needle. Okay, so um, that's the rule of thumb. In and out at the same. So you can go in at the side, but you must actually come out at the same angle um, just to stop breaking your needles, basically. Um, the way felting works, in case you don't know, all of the, um, if you put wool under a microscope, they, each strand actually has scales on it. The fact that the needle has got barbs on it down in this bottom area means that when you're stabbing the wall and agitating the strands together, those um, scales on the wall will actually lock together. Now, it's exactly the same process that happens if you do wet felting, um, but obviously um, that's done en masse um with water lots of agitation all done this is done at a much slower pace so that you can decide almost where each strand goes and that's why um, we can sculpt with our needles with wool okay um, that's enough 
from me going on about that. If I think of more things as we go along, I will explain. And we'll pop that over there. Pop our instructions over there. And off we go. Right, so I we are going to start with the body. So um, once again, let me bring my little model. So this is our little model. So we're going to start with the body. And then we're going to add the hat. Now, I tend to um, not just do the body to here. I tend to do the body up here so that then I've got a nice substantial area to add my hat to. So um, we will do that that way. Let me put that over there. And I can show you a couple of different variations because I do it different every time. Um, the one time I did it like that to add to and one time I've done it like that doesn't matter what yours turns out like we can still turn it into the gnome as I've originally shown you okay so there are two ways to get going with this let me show you um, first of all with my pencil let me take a smaller piece in fact, let me bring over let me bring over that piece I had earlier and unravel it slightly of white now what we're going to do is we're going to roll up the grey in a moment just by rolling it up and then felting it. If you struggle with the rolling process and getting it tight, another way you can do it is get yourself um, something like a pencil and holding on to the end as I am there, you can wrap the wool around the pencil like so. Okay, now I haven't used much wool there, obviously, but just to show you, get another piece, wrap it all the way around until you've got to the thickness you want, then you just pull it off. Um, as you can see, it stays together, and then you just get your needle and start stabbing. Okay, now because the needle isn't at, because the needle, because the pencil isn't actually in the kit, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it as in everything you've got in the kit, which means we're going to use the rolling process. So I like to build up my layers and I also like to never quite use every bit that I've got in the kit just in case I need to use a bit later. So I've just divided that up into four and I'm going to use one of my quarters to start the roll. And I really am just rolling it up, concentrating on holding in the middle because the ends will be fluffy. Fluffy end with a bit of red on and fluffy. So let's just do a very light tack of the wall just to make sure it's not going anywhere. And then pull that down there a minute. And here I'm just going to stab in the end. One of the ends is obviously going to be the bottom and the other end is going to be where it gets um, thinner for the red cap. So let's have a little look. Hmm, they both look about even at the moment. Okay, let's just do a little bit of stabbing down before we add the next layer. Sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's not, so we just have to make a decision and decide with the next layer where we're going to emphasise the layer, which will be down the bottom, in order to give us that nice base. Okay, just tucking that in again. Have a feeling I'm going to decide on that end for the base, this end to be elongated. There we go. 
and I'm just doing that at an angle this time rather than all the way through just so that it moves basically a bit of the wall down rather than in the center because I've now decided that that's going to be my thin end and this is going to be my fat end there we go and I'm turning as I go just so that I do an even an even Stevens right so let's get the next okay in the next quarter I'm just going to divide that in two so that I can initially go around here that bit just to give it a bit more yeah okay I'm gonna add this next piece over the top of that just so that we can give it a nice there we go pulled that a little bit too harshly so it came off which is fine so I'm just going to stab in that for adding that again still got um, two more pieces so this is just where I'm going to keep building up the core. So this, because this is our main body, our structure. So we need to make sure that this is felted enough. Now, the question which you frequently get asked is, you know, how soft how hard should anything be there is no absolute i mean you will make things which were required to be flimsy like i've made fish angel fish where things need to be very flimsy and i've made horses which are need to be um, quite rock solid because obviously you need to sculpt muscles and things like that so there is no right nor wrong so it can be either way neither are going to fall apart so it's a personal taste thing that when you pick up your little piece how do you like it to feel now if i pick up my pieces i've done here um that i can still squish it i can squish that one a bit more than that um so they're both perfectly squishable but they're not flimsy obviously like that but don't get obsessed with it being rock hard because it does not need to be rock hard. He's a little gnome and let's face it, little gnomes, no doubt, have squishy bellies. So you wouldn't want it to be rock hard. I say no doubt because I have never met one. But I've heard a lot about them and one of the things that I've heard about our Scandinavian gnomes is that that they're not just for Christmas Scandinavian home gnomes are around all year and they look after the home but when it comes to Christmas what they do like and Christmas Eve is the time to produce it is porridge and a very large knob of butter and apparently if you don't produce the said porridge and knob of butter they tend to play tricks on you during the year you might find you lose your keys a lot things like that so always best to keep them happy right let's just do a little bit up this end because this is going to be where my hat's going to go don't want to ignore it completely a 
even though obviously we will be adding our red to there. But it's just good to have a bit of strength in the centre. Now at any stage, if you're worried about your fingers getting close and stabbing them, um, by all means either put on some finger guards or I um, will often, if I'm getting to be really thin, is use a business card to squish, um, to get a business card and squish it so that that protects my fingers. Another thing I sometimes do is I put my nail in the way so that I'm actually felting down my nail, but you might not want to do that, that's just my... I I do actually um, stab myself occasionally. I am not immune. Okay. Let's just tack that one and get another piece. Do love the sound of that crunch. Right. Okay. Let's pull that in half. And again. Still just stabbing around, um, keep turning, keep stabbing. I do the reason why I build up layers is I quite like to um, stab something onto the piece as opposed to putting the whole lot together, wrapping it all up, and then just stabbing because then I just feel like I'm stabbing relentlessly without as as much purpose as when I've added a piece and I feel like I'm joining it. It's co obviously completely psychological because you're doing exactly the same thing either way. It's just the way that I prefer to do it um, to make me feel like I'm getting somewhere. was um I'd forgotten how much fun these little gnomes are to do I was um doing um the few samples over there last night um just to remind myself and uh, just so put a smile on my face such lovely little things Making sure once again that we're keeping our base nice and flat. I always actually put a dip in the middle so that it's around the edges flat because otherwise I can sometimes get a bit of a wobble on. Okay. 
right. This is a much wider piece, nothing wrong with that. There we go. Takes it a little bit further up the barrel, is it that? Now you can start to think about whether you want to do yours exactly as it is on the um, front of the box. The little man with his dotted hat, little male gnome with his dotted hat, not man. Um, or whether um, you want to do a female, whether you want to do um, a male gnome with stripes on his hat or a bell on his hat, or so many things. I saw um, a lovely picture that someone had shared with the Crafty Kit Company Needle Felting Group on Facebook, um, and they had actually done the hats green, and then had um, put silver thread between the balls, and I think the balls were colour balls. But anyway, it was so that the hat looked like a Christmas tree, absolutely gorgeous and um, and the little gnome had a red nose which of course um, you could do here but it might not notice quite so much against the red hat but of course you could add a bit of extra um, red to the flesh colour and give him a pink nose rather than a red nose if you can mix the walls together just like you do with paint um, and produce whatever look you want. As I say, I've never seen one, so I could not possibly attest to what a little Nordic gnome would look like. I can only go by what other people tell me. leave a little bit so I'll leave that bit over there but I'm going to start up here just tack that on take that should probably do it that way I did that quite loosely, so it doesn't matter enormously if you put it on loosely or tightly. I would just suggest that if you do it tight, it um, takes a little less time to felt. So I'm just going to take a little bit more time to make sure that's all nice and flat. And then we start to add the red. There's something exciting about adding red, isn't there? I don't know um, why. Um, just such a wonderful colour. Probably a bit biased because I had red hair for many years. Um, if you've seen my head coming to shot, You'll notice that it's actually extremely grey these days. But uh, yeah, I did have very red hair, so I'm probably very biased. And I'm just thinking if I have a red hat, I'll take the place of my red hair perhaps. Press the 
into the center. So I've got that final piece so that if I still think, oh, just missed a piece which needs building up or suddenly decide I've not done it quite as evenly as I had thought and I need to add a bit in a different place. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. bottom there. Nice crunch. Yes, I think so. I think I've got quite a nice little, quite a nice little shape to then start the hat on here. So I'm just going to decide at what point I want my little hat to start. So bear in mind, I'm going to do my little beard, have my little nose. So I think, I think my hat's going to start about there, about there. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so I've still got my grey, remember, so I can do some tidying up if I want to. Let me just pull that in half so that I'm playing with half of the red to start with. Now then, going from there. So let's, now bearing in mind what we're doing is we're just adding this red bit up here. So we've got a little bit under there already. Now don't worry about having this lovely little curve, curved under here, because we're going to add that um, little piece separately. Um, once we've done the beard and those. So at the moment we're just going to be doing the bulk of the red and making sure we've got our shape of our hat. So we take, uh, in fact, let's just do a little tack down. Lovely. And start him off going round. Okay, now let's stab into that bottom bit. So that that's not going anywhere. Now I do like to do a twist because it makes it so much easier to get that going up until the chimney like look to the I always find that's the easiest way to do it. Okay. okay just making sure that's down there. Okay. Once again, let's just do that little twist. See, with that twist, it's nice and easy to get that cone shape. Once we don't have too much up here, we can tuck that inside. Okay, let's just do a turn to the side. Make sure it's stabbed in down there first. And then some more up here. So if you suddenly think, oh, my hat's too long or whatever, we can 
shorten that at any stage, that's not a problem. But we do need to get the basic shape. Okay, now then. Just move and I am once again folding downward because at the bottom of the hat is where the biggest bulk is rather than at the top and I think especially when it comes to the funnel of the hat it will be quite difficult to judge felting to the centre you'll end up felting out the other side of the hat and so you'll spend a long time going around trying to get rid of all your fuzzies why I felt down rather than through. Okay, so I'm just doing that round on this top part, keeping it nice and thin before we put any more on. doing it from the top so I am just holding it tightly there being careful so I'm doing it much slower to take care of my fingers now swing around up again once again taking care with my fingers my single needle because it gets more comp well, more difficult to avoid my fingers put it that way and we are going to go down the center which does two things okay find your center and stab into it which is strengthening up down that funnel, tube, chimney, whatever you want to call it, then come out and just take a piece in with you. Sometimes if you need to just twirl it round, just to make sure you take a piece down, making sure you're taking it down into the chimney and not out the outside here. There we go. Sometimes you grab a bit more than others, but you will get there. And that will just, as I say, two things. Strengthen up your top of your hat and get rid of the fluffy bits. Unless, of course, you want to keep the fluffy bits or turn it into a little bauble on top. Which, of course, is perfectly doable. in there.
considered to be tucked in. Just stab it in at the top. Turn it around. Quite a good shape to it right now um it looks to be like i've kind of got the hat going back like that unless that's the side yeah i quite like that kind of got a bit of a belly to it hasn't it yeah could have it over the front could have it over the side i think that will be the way as i say i expect that hat to come down a bit lower um, but I will be adding a bit more so I'm not worrying about that until I've got my little um, beard in place so let's pull off a piece of wool now that is really just a small piece now because our beard let me pull that off a bit more so we can start off I'll show you on here. Basically, I'm going to pull that in at the bottom and then I'm going to stab along a line at the top and then pull that bit down. Okay, so on my little mat, let's just stab that bit in at the bottom so that we don't lose that little. And I'm going to stab along an edge there, put that down, okay, stab again, so that's the part we're going to stab into that little gnome, bring that down to the bottom, and just stab it together there, you might want to bring it together as a little plait at the bottom if you wanted to. Turn that into a little plait, couldn't you? All right, now that's my little belly there. So I'm going to place it so that that's right at the very bottom. That's up there. So let's just tap that top bit in. Let's just tap that bottom bit in. Easier if I hold it down and do that. There we go. Make sure it comes to a point. Okay, now let's get that middle bit. And now let's make sure we bring that in so it's not too wide. It's just going to be that front bit so we might have a nice fluffy beard there we go and then the same the other side just decide whereabouts I want that to tap that there there we go tap that in place so that's a fluffy beard now if you don't want it too fluffy you can easily just I'm going to stab the sides so that it doesn't expand. There we go. We know where our beard territory is. Let's just do a random down the middle so that it's not too floaty. And then you can just easily fluff it up. Or not, depending on what look you want. Now I'm going to just tuck those bits underneath. You can cover that up if you want to with the um, with the grey. Right now, we're going to do with the little nose. Okay. So let's take our piece, and how about we could tie a really loose knot and decide that would be about the size and then wrap the rest of the wall around 
and just dab it into place. Just gives us a nice little base to start our nose from. I'm stabbing with a single needle more because I don't want to stab my fingers for any other reason. When you've got smaller area to go for, it's often much easier to just stab with one needle. That starts um, hardening up quite quickly. I'm going to leave a little bit of fluff so that I can attach it with that. find where we're going to put it so I'm going to put mine right there right underneath that hat as I say we're going to put a nice rim around it in a second let's just tack that in that loose bit can just easily be tacked in there I'm going to probably use that loose bit which is hanging around but if I find that I don't want to use it I don't need to worry because I would cover it up with the red but more often than not I would use it. So I'm just going around the edge stabbing through the edge down into the core of the little gnome. I We'll go over the top as well. Now, do we need that over the top or will we okay? We might be okay without it. Let's see. Or do we want to even out the tone? Let's have a look. him down a little bit. Just stabbing at the front there. There we go. Lovely little nose. Just going to pull my little beard a little bit over that way. Maybe move him slightly to the right by just stabbing down there. There we go. Lovely. Beautiful. Right. Now, our hat. So, we want to make this lovely edge. So, how we're going to do that is this. Lay some very small pieces across. So what we're going to do is we're going to stab down the middle and then we're going to fold it over and basically that fold is going to be our little 
rim here so it's going to be nice and puffy so in order to help that on its way I'm going to take a piece of the red and lay it down the centre but let me stab first stab a little line Let's just check it goes all the way around. Yep. Okay. So we are, well, for mine, I want it to go over the nose. So I don't want it to go straight round. I want it to go over the nose and round and down the back. Okay. So let me just tack that in there over the nose and then make sure it comes around the back I can stretch it a little bit because it's not um, tightly felted or anything but now once I've got it secured where I want it over the nose it's in place all the way around and once again I'm felting downwards because it's into that rim that I want the bulk to go rather than away from it down into that the rims lost a little bit of its definition around the back which I can either um, add to in a minute or decide that the little gnome has been sleeping with his hat on and flattened the back with one needle so that it's slowly deciding how it's going to look. If I'm happy with it, I can easily change my direction if I think it's not going according to plan. But yes, we like that. We like that a lot. Okay. 
Gap, heavy gap, heavy gap. Delightful little red hat. It's feeling nicely felted as well. You can tell, can't you, when you stab in, you're getting a nice crunch and you can feel that you're felting into something rather than a bit of a void. Which, if that was the case, if you're felting into a bit of a void, you just need to add some more wool in the direction that we've done this time. that's come together with his little face <laughs> now if we wanted to make a bigger deal out of that back bit I can just stab in just under that line needs a bell on his this time but I'm going to be doing that but say that I want to do it exactly as it is in the kit so that uh, wherever you are and that's all you've got with you this is what you can do <laughs> Very sweet. Okay, so yeah, you can leave them like that if you want to, or we can add our little white dots. So, little white dots. Take a little bit of fluff. In fact, you will be amazed at the um, small amount that you will need in order to roll up. A little dot, take your little needle, slightly hold him in place, and just felt lightly. So you're felting underneath, really, because it's so small. You don't need to go all the way around, like. We did a bit on the nose, but if you think, oh, that's a bit untidy, then yeah. And there's dot number one. Okay, roll up another one. Doesn't matter if it's the same size or not. slightly in place and you have dot number two there we go and carry on until you have all of your dots. So as you can see, I've got one bit fatter, a bit thinner, one's nose is a bit wider. I obviously used white on that, didn't I? Rather than the, well, you know, that's the way it is. You just happen to have a white nose. Perhaps you've been out in the snow. There you go. Looks slightly different, don't they? Fabulous. Okay, so. Let's have a think about the different things that you could do. So, 
you could get a piece of the wall and plait it like I have there and put that down the sides and that just gives him a little extra decoration or you could take much thicker plait and um, not have the beard have thick plaits down the side and perhaps decorate the rim with um, white on that edge bit roll up white and and then you would have a little lady um, gnome with her fluffy collared hat um, as I say one time I actually did a full-on Viking and um, I gave him plaits I did a little plait at the end of his beard and um, I gave him two little horns and I, I don't think I gave him a huge chimney. I cut that down and just gave him two little horns. And you know, if you're, if you want to add more, you could actually give them little ears or little feet underneath there. Lots of things, little bell on the top. Wouldn't that be lovely? just beautiful love them make me smile and uh, look forward to seeing everybody else's